A woman without a man is like a fish without a bicycle, or so the famous saying goes. But what about a man without a bicycle? My time in Georgia was coming to a close, mainly spent in the bathroom with egg-based food poisoning. Bloody eggs. And I'd love Georgia, with its calm trendy cities and leafy suburbs. But I knew it was time to formulate a plan. Still got a few months left if my money holds out that long. And I want some structure, a blueprint for the rest of my trip. But what I needed in the meantime was somewhere to think, somewhere to cook up an exciting new plot. And where better to put my final few brain cells to use than the home of alcoholic horse milk. I'm not lying, look it up. That's right, it's Kyrgyzstan! Here I am doing a bit of a recce. So this is where Kyrgyzstan is on a map. It seems to be a mix of Asian people and Russians. Quite a lot of tall people about actually. I've been to Dodo Pizza for some scran. <laughs> Strange name for a pizza shop like. And I'm in Bishkek, the capital of Kyrgyzstan. Still getting used to the currency, which is always the same in a strange new country. When there's like thousands and thousands equals 10 pence. And it's nice, nice vibe. I think this is going to be a nice place to uh, think about what I'm going to do next. But I'm just on a bit of a short walk because uh, I was up all night last night flying. My flight was delayed. The airline actually lost my bag with everything in it, all my meds and clothes and everything. Um, lost my bag for a couple of hours and I was just racing around the airport trying to find it and I had to find it myself. I just found it lying. It was just lying in a corner randomly somewhere. So I thought I wasn't even going to make it, but I'm here. Let's go for a spy round at Kyrgyz supermarket. So we've got some Russian chocolate here, looks nice. We've got some like squirrel food bars. Uh, Russian peeve, is that Russian whiskey? I don't know, it's probably strong. Uh, Shan Pringles, crab flavor, Mr. Pot. I'm pretty sure this is a uh, caviar in tomato sauce. Eggs. Shan Twister. Next to a creepy doll. Some gigantic dry fish just lying on the shelf there. And everything rammed into a Morrison's bag. Standard. The people here are absolutely beautiful. Like, uh, like another level of beauty like the men are like tall handsome healthy looking and the women like forget about margot robbie who i think's got a boring plain face like the people here have got like this like this otherworldly beauty like they clearly defy conventional beauty standards in the west but oh that that it's disorienting walking around because it's hard not to stare. Like I found myself staring at a bloke and a woman yesterday. This couple. I was like, ah, look at how handsome they are. And they both clocked us like. <laughs> but I, I would overlay some photos at this point normally just to demonstrate my point, but uh, I can hardly go around shoving my camera in people's faces. And perhaps that's why I'm being recommended literature like this on my Kindle. on the box.
I've come for a lovely walk. Took us an hour and a half to get here. Found a nice place on the map. Lovely lake with a path round it. You can walk round. Got here. Ah. Oh. All oh, right. Just some friendly global warming there. Here's the jetty. Evidence of a lovely wildfire in the lake. Put that in your pipe, Clarkson. You know that dream you have where you're desperate for the toilet, but all the bogs you go to are absolutely manky and there's no toilet roll and they're all in public. It is just horrible and horrible. An endless maze of bogs. I think I found it in a local bus station. golden hour here in the city much nicer walking about at this time when the temperatures cooled down a bit you know what the city is so clean I, I don't think I've seen a cleaner city probably except for Pyongyang in North North Korea for obvious reasons but so nice um, and I'm trying to find somewhere to watch the England match England v uh, Swi Switzerland aye in the quarterfinals um, obviously there's an Irish pub so I'm going to see what it's like. I didn't know if they'll have it on the telly like, but if they've got decent enough Wi-Fi, I'll watch it on my phone. It's one o'clock in the morning. England have won. <laughs> on penalties. I'm a bit drunk. I'm outside a super club with loud rap on. Rap music. So I had to go to a local nightclub. It was banging and there was a room in the back of the nightclub which had nobody in it. It was a massive room, nobody in it. And a massive screen, just randomly a massive screen showing the England match. But a couple of Russian guys came in and they sussed I was English because of the way I was like cheering for England, obviously. And when the penalty shootout happened, they were increasingly like banging on the table for Switzerland, they're getting a bit more leery. So England won anyway. And I f <laughs> off straight away. But one of them said something as I was leaving, something surreptitious to his mate. So when I come out of the bar, the nightclub, I had to like be really careful. I was like looking behind us because it gets quite dark. I didn't want to get, uh, rushed and chinned but i'm about 20 minutes away from them now so i'm irish i wish england had just lost save the stress <laughs> The city here is so spread out and so wide and we don't have that in England because it's a small country with loads of people so the streets are narrow but this is just like this isn't even the biggest square in Bishkek and it's massive the streets are massive and you've got huge buildings like this monuments to socialist pride 
lit up at night. I love it. Look at that man. That's the parliament of Kyrgyzstan. Like something off a sci-fi film. Look at this for a statue. Oh yes, a man holding a horse. You know what it is? I was looking at this map again, right? And I didn't realise that Bishkek was so close to Almaty in Kazakhstan. So with that in mind... Don't make a Borat reference. Don't make a Borat reference. Don't make a Borat reference. I've come to a traditional Kazakh restaurant. It's beautiful inside, like. I've got my own Kazakh traditional hat. And I've been given a shot of milk. So what I've noticed about these two countries, this part of the world, Kyrgyzstan and Kazakhstan, is the same thing that holds true for all the other countries that I've been to that were once under Russian occupation or part of the Soviet. It just has an influence on the way people are. They've got that stern brow, like the, they've got that, like what we would describe as unpoliteness. It's hard to get a smile out of them and, and I said exactly the same thing about like the Balkans. And don't get us wrong, they're nice people, like the Kyrgyz people were nice. But what is it about the Russians that first of all make them that way? And secondly, make them have such a strong influence on other cultures. Cultures which otherwise would be massively different to theirs if they hadn't occupied and sometimes I think it's a shame, but then like that's coming from my Westerners point of view. Like I want people to be all smiley and happy and pleased to see you, but you, just, <laughs> you don't necessarily get that. And again, that doesn't mean that they're, they're bad people or they're not nice. It's just the way they present in public. And I want to make it clear that it's not just me that thinks this, like I've spoken to various people in the different countries that I'm on about. Residents, Kyrgyz people, Croatian people who say the same thing, they recognize it. And it's something that like, they make a joke out of it in a self-deprecating way. So it's definitely a thing. Are you the Kazakhstan Minister for Tourism? Unsure what to do with a local area of outstanding natural beauty? Fear not, turn it into an amusement park. <laughs> a 
And speaking of Kazakh tourism, you know what? Here's me trying not to make a Borat reference because I didn't want to be offensive to the Kazakh people. But they actually use Borat in the advertising strategy. So with that in mind, what do I make of Kazakhstan? I like... So I think the Beatles must have been here at some point. We've got John. Paul. George. And Ringu. Refreshing cup of veg. 300. And here's weird, he's saying that I'll struggle in other parts of the world. It's a vegetarian's dream. It was at this point that my journey decided to take a bit of a wild detour. It's uh, the middle of the night here in Almaty. And I'm at the airport a lot sooner than I expected it to be. Because there's been some stuff happening recently. Some important stuff. And it means I've got to be somewhere. 